Good evening and welcome to Athens City Council. It's Monday, April 1st, 2019 at 7 p.m. And tonight we're in regular session. Our first item of business is to establish a quorum. All members but one are here with us tonight. And so we do have the quorum. The next item is disposition of the minutes for the regular session held on March 18th, 2019. And if I could have a motion so for moved. approval. And second. second. Okay. We have a motion and second. All those in favor of accepting the minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Okay. The motion carries. Minutes are approved. We now have communications. And I believe Councilmember Butler has several. Thank you, President Nisley. I wanted to offer a friendly reminder that this weekend is the International Street Fair. The parade will begin at 11.30. I was reminded by Mayor Patterson. Um, and I believe there's also another, uh, a number of other events happening this weekend as well. I believe Mom's Weekend with Ohio University is this weekend as well. Um, there will be some street closings with International Street Fair. I believe Union um, within just that one block will be closed. Additionally, I did want to acknowledge that um, I applaud the administration for their support and forward thinking with the new establishment of the Armory Park slash Pocket Art Park there um, next door to the, the Armory. There is uh, a lot of energy and hustle and bustle this weekend surrounding that. Uh, there's new artwork and murals up as well as um, places to sit and take in the, uh, the moment and the scenery. So again, I think it turned out really nice and it's a, a, a new favorable addition to our community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thanks to Family Dollar too, because I th as I understand, they allowed us to uh, paint on the, on the wall with a mural there and it looks really nice. Okay. Communications from other council members. Yes, council member Cox. Yes, President Nisley, thank you. Uh, I would uh, like to remind everybody that the next uh, regular board meeting of the Athens City School District will be happening on April 18th at 6.30 p.m. at the Athens High School Auditorium in the Plains. Okay. Council member Crowell. Thank you. And uh, the Environment and Sustainability Commission will be meeting Wednesday night, 6.30 in the... Uh, conference room on the first floor of the city building. Thank you. Great. Okay. We'll move on to then to reports and communications from other elected officials. Law Director Eliason. Okay. Mayor Patterson. Uh, the only thing that I have tonight is a reminder that tomorrow is World Autism Awareness Day. Um, we'll be reading a proclamation tomorrow afternoon recognizing it as such, as well as this is Autism Awareness Month. The cupola has been lit up blue. I believe tomorrow is Wear Blue Day as well. Uh, so this is a reminder to council. And I want to echo um, what Member Butler was saying about the Armory Park. Um, it really took a village to, to pull that together. That's a couple phone calls to the property owner of Family Dollar. Uh, as well as I, I want to give a big thank you um, to uh, Colton James and uh, Dane Coger. They were the two who have worked really hard for the past eight or nine months, almost a year now, um, working hard to, to landscape that, that the uh, Armory Park, what I've been calling the Sculpture Park, which hopefully we'll be able to get some sculpture in there at some point soon, but it certainly has kind of um, uplifted the north end of Court Street and in particular that space, which as council may remember, it used to be a gravel parking lot with chain link fence around it. So mm -hmm. now it's a rather open, warm, and inviting space. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to ordinances for third reading. The first one is Ordinance 1919, an ordinance granting an enhanced access easement to allow utilities to property contiguous to Hope Drive. And this was originally discussed through committee um, with council member Fall. I might give a little bit of background information and then ask that one of the council members moves forward with a more motion to approve. Uh, this is um, working with 
Hawking Athens Perry Community Action, otherwise known as HAPCAP, and what they're working to do is purchase and develop privately owned land. It's about 6.7 acres that's contiguous to Hope Drive, with the purpose uh, being to provide a facility that would serve as a Head Start Early Education Center. And so what we're doing is uh, granting the easement so that the property, so that the utilities can be put in place uh, for this facility. Yes, Council Members, Grace. I make a motion for approval of this ordinance. Thank you. Second. second. Okay. So we have a motion and second for approval of Ordinance 1919. And are there any other comments or questions from Council Members or Administration? Any co questions or comments from the audience? Then we'll vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The motion carries and the ordinance is approved. Ordinance 2019 is an orth ordinance authorizing a contract with the Washington County Commissioners and declaring an emergency. This is introduced by Council Member Butler. Thank you, President Nisley. At this time, I would like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2019. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, quite simply, this is uh, an ordinance in which we are working in collaboration with um, Washington County. We have a letter on our drive from um, Washington County Commissioners regarding the cost for 2019 jail contracts. The cost will be $68 a day. And again, this is uh, an assistance to uh, our county here when we're seeing overflow and the ability to help house female um, non-law abiding people. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and second for approval of 2019. Are there any comments or questions from council members or administration? Any comments or questions from the audience? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion carries and the ordinance is approved. Thank you. Ordinance 2119 is an ordinance amending the 2019 appropriation ordinance and is introduced by Council Member Reisner. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt 2119. Second. Second. Uh, this is a, an ordinance of uh, moving funds. Uh, I can read the pertinent section to remind everyone. The 2019 Appropriation Ordinance 14018 is hereby amended as follows. Decreasing General Fund Code Enforcement 101.351.5201 supplies by $1,000 and increasing General Fund Code Enforcement 101.351.561 refunds by same amount and decreasing and increasing the total appropriations by said amount. Thank you. So we have a motion and second for approval of Ordinance 2119. Any other comments or questions from council or administration? Any comments or questions from audience? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion carries and the ordinance is approved. Ordinance 2219 is an ordinance providing for the issuance of $460,000 of notes by the City of Athens, Ohio, in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying part of the costs of acquiring new parking meters and declaring an emergency. And this is introduced by Council Member Reisner. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt 2219. Second. As the uh, lengthy title indicates, this is to uh, have the money for the purchase of the, of the new parking meters for, uh, to replace the old ones that we now currently use, uh, excluding those that are in the parking garage. Gosh, okay. okay, we have a motion and second for approval of Ordinance 2219. Any other comments or questions from council members, administration, audience? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ordinance, or the motion carries and the ordinance is approved. Ordinance 2319 is an ordinance amending Ordinance 10218, authorizing the Service Safety Director to purchase smart meet parking meters and is introduced by Councilmember Katsos. President Nisley, uh, I would like to make a motion 
to adopt 2319. Second. And uh, this is, uh, you know, going back to last year when we rethought our, um, our parking uptown. Well, administration rethought our parking and then came to council, but the, uh, we, uh, we were in agreement of looking at uh, leasing a series of meters uh, for uptown to have more options for citizens. What we found out uh, in the meantime was that uh, that process was going to cost the city an additional $55,000 in interest and fees, and there was also some legality to that, um, that contract of whether we could even participate. So this is a, uh, a different route in which we would purchase the meters outright. Okay. We have a motion and second for approval of 2319. Any other comments or questions? from council, administration, or the audience. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion carries and the ordinance is approved. We now have two ordinances for second reading and typically what happens is, is that I just read the titles so that they've been publicly read, um, but usually no discussion unless there is an additional comment or question. Ordinance 2419 is an ordinance closing certain streets in Uptown Athens on Friday, June 21st and Saturday, June 22nd, 2019 for the BRIC criterion. And this is introduced by Councilmember Katsas. Ordinance 2519 is an ordinance amending Athens City Code, Title 17, taxes. I'm, I'm sorry, President. Oh, I, you do have a comment. Well, just briefly. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just was, Go ahead. Going, I was just going to acknowledge. Um, that Mr. Brown was present in the uh, audience if there were any questions pertaining to uh, 2419. Okay. Any comments or questions? Okay. Thank you for being here, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, President. Sure. So we'll read now um, Ordinance 2519 for the second time, and this is an ordinance amending Athens City Code, Title 17, Taxes. Chapter 17.01, Municipal Income Tax, to include sections 718.80 through 718.95 of the Ohio Revised Code, and is introduced by all members of council. We now have ordinances for first reading. Quite a few. <laughs> So, Ordinance 2619 is an ordinance authorizing the Service Safety Director to enter into a five-year contract to purchase body-worn cameras and tasers for the Athens Police Department. This is introduced by Councilmember Butler. Thank you, President Nisley. Uh, if you recall, at committee meeting, we had a very thorough uh, presentation and discussion by Chief Pyle, who, to me, very, um, was very apparent and obvious that he had done his homework and uh, his due diligence. I was very impressed with his understanding and knowledge of the, pro the, the uh, product and um, the interest in moving forward with body-worn cameras and tasers. Uh, quite simply, this would authorize City Service Safety Director Andy Stone, who, who was also present for our committee meeting, to um, proceed with a five-year contract with Axon um, which would then enable the city to purchase approximately 20 new tasers and uh, 20 new body-worn cameras, uh, is my understanding. Um, this would be roughly $214,000, $179,000 from the general fund. Uh, some of the things that, that I, I thought, again, too, that impressed me with uh, the chief's um, research pertaining to this was that he had um, been in contact with the uh, near uh, some of the other departments that who that have uh, implemented the use of body worn cameras and had been in contact with those uh, respective chiefs and kind of picking their brain for what was working and wasn't and what was not working. So we were able to um, benefit from that. The amount of data that's collected and the terabytes, I believe four terabytes uh, use a year, which will be provided by Axon, uh, unlimited storage, interfaces with uh, current system, uh, the inclusion of recertification and training. Uh, again, this all impressed me with uh, the presentation, uh, as well as the, the potential for it to be activated 
the cameras to be activated with either, either sirens, holsters, or the tasers as soon as those are implemented. Uh, again, I think this, this is um, uh, beneficial to the safety of our officers as well as the, the community at large. Thank you. And do we have any other comments or questions from council members? Council members or consists? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, you know, and I think we've probably seen these, these, these units in use in larger cities, but I think what, what, what struck me, I think Chillicothe currently has, already has this system. I think that was something that was mentioned during the, I, I am not positive for sure, I mean, but I feel like there, I yes. feel like there were a couple cities that were mentioned that Logan, were. Logan, Lancaster, and Chillicothe. Okay, that were our size, yep. Okay, yeah, thank you. Any other council members? Yes, Council Member McGee. I, I would just like to say I, I think this is an a issue that its time has come. Not only are the other cities doing it, but um, the cities that don't do it are put in a very difficult situation if we're uh, ever in a, a situation where there's a lawsuit against the city. And the question is, well, why didn't you have cameras that would have recorded this? I, I think that would be a very bad position for the city to be in. Uh, I had asked the chief whether um, the city would be entitled to any um, contribution by our insurance companies, and he said he would be getting back to me or to council on that issue. Uh, I think it would be appropriate if they would contribute to the purchase if possible. So, um, But I think it's definitely worthwhile, and I applaud the chief uh, and the mayor for coming forward with this. Okay, thank you. Any other, yes, Mayor Patterson. Uh, Mayor McGee, I will get that information. Uh, the Chief hasn't provided me with an answer to your question, but I'll make sure that we get that answer for you. Okay. Um, I would like to, to just briefly chime in, since I wasn't here last Monday night. Um, this is something that I have been keenly interested in for a while, and I know Council Member McGee was interested as well a couple of years ago to the point that we both went to not together, but uh, both went to a conference up in Columbus, uh, a safety conference to where there was a session on BWCs. Uh, and it was interesting at the time listening to some of the, the shortcomings of some of the systems at that point in time, but we feel really comfortable with the system now, two years later, or a year later, I can't remember exactly when it was we went to that conference in Columbus, but regardless, uh, with the image stabilization on these particular uh, BWCs, um, as well as the program with the um, latest with the tasers. The thing that impressed me as well is that, you know, as probably uh, the chief conveyed to you last week, that when um, a squad is running lights and siren and the door opens, it'll turn the cameras on. Uh, it'll also activate any other BWCs that are also arriving, as well as if someone has to. Um, you know, draw uh, their sidearm that uh, the snap on the holster guard will will uh, activate the, the BWC and get it, you know, continually running and saving at the same time. So there, I think there's some real um, there's some real advantages to the most recent BWC technology that's out there. It's time. It's time that we we put on this path. It's the right way to go. Okay, any other comments or questions from audience members? Okay, okay, that ordinance has had its first reading. Ordinance 2719 is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to submit an application and enter into an agreement with the Ohio Development Services Agency for a community development block grant, CDBG, critical infrastructure grant program for program year 2019. This is introduced by Council Member Butler. Thank you again, President Isley. This would authorize um, the mayor to submit an application and enter into an agreement with the Ohio Development Services Agency for the Community Development Block Grant, which is specific to critical infrastructure program, and super specific would be dewatering device. The uh, city has attempted to apply for this in the past and has been unsuccessful, and we're hoping to try to do so again this time. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from council members or administration? Comments or questions from the audience? Okay. Ordinance 2819 is an ordinance amending Ordinance 2318, 
Authorizing Design Engineering of the Stimson Avenue Improvements Project Number 315, introduced by Councilmember McGee. Um, as, as you know from the last meeting, uh, committee meeting, um, the cost of the Stimson Avenue project has increased somewhat. Um, this ordinance would approve an amendment that would uh, increase the cost of the engineering services from um, 200000 to basically $600,000. Um, it says $630,000 uh, would be authorized, um, including as well the additional funds and all of that would be coming from the street rehabilitation fund. Uh, these are for the engineering services. The project itself is scheduled for commencement, I believe, in 2020. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. Okay. Um, so I believe the um, engineering office deems this to be necessary, and the project itself, as we discussed last week, would um, include the possibility of... Um, having some of the telephone poles on Stimson Avenue, um, have the wires placed underground, and uh, definitely some needed improvements to Stimson Avenue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Mayor Patterson. Uh, this likely came up last week, but you know there has been a large amount of, of uh, community engagement in this particular, this particular Stimson Avenue project, and hopefully it was also mentioned that once again, as we typically do, we'll be putting conduit uh, for future fiber through that corridor, which would be a, a great location for us to have fiber threaded someday. But at this point in time, it's uh, adding to at least our, our conduit infrastructure that we've got underground already. Okay. Just for purposes of understanding the extent of the project itself, we are applying for grants to assist in the funding of the project, I believe. Is that correct? We'll be looking at the Transportation Improvement District, which is an economic development uh, grant under uh, ODOT that we will certainly apply for that in that corridor, which could the I think I've mentioned this to Council before, the Transportation Improvement District grant will cover 25% um, up to $250,000. Uh, we would likely apply for the full $250,000 and if successful, that would be one layer in the stack of various grants that we can start to put together. Not too dissimilar from that that we did on the Stimson Avenue roundabout 1804-way project to where we were able to, to uh, layer a number of funding mechanisms to really draw down what we were actually having to pay out of the general fund, or out of the street fund. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other comments or questions? Ordinance 2919 is an author... Ordinance authorizing participation in the Ohio Department of Transportation's Cooperative Purchasing Program and declaring an emergency. Introduced by Council Member Katsas. President Nisley, thank you. And this was uh, discussed last week at, at committee. Uh, and this is uh, an annual program that we tend to participate in. Uh, so basically going in with ODOT to, uh, to secure a better price on our road salt. The... Um, the timeline of which uh, ODOT tends to put these forward um, is going to require suspension on the second read. Okay. As the due date is uh, April 19th. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Any comments or questions from the audience? Okay. Ordinance 3019 is an ordinance authorizing the Service Safety Director to enter into an LPA state project agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation for a bridge deck overlay project within the corporation boundary on U.S. State Route 33 and declaring an emergency. Introduced by Councilmember Katsas. President Nisley, thank you. And this is just another time that, that the state will be coming to town and doing some work within the city limits. And this is on State Route 33, the bridge. They're doing a bridge overlay project um, on the bridges over East State Street. That's going to happen in October. And as usual, um, ODOT assumes 100% of all costs. Okay, great. Comments or questions? Okay. We'll move on to Ordinance 3119, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to submit an application and enter into an agreement with ODOT for a Transportation Alternatives Program grant for an Athens Uptown Area Improvements Project 
and declaring an emergency. Introduced by Councilmember Katzis. President Nicely, thank you. This is the uh, the legislation to uh, to apply for for a transportation alternative programs grant. Uh, this one in specific uh, is is targeting the uh, the streets perpendicular to Court Street, so one block on either side, uh, East Union, Washington, and State Street. And I don't is there is I don't know if there there may be another one too that I might be missing. Um, but this would be looking at uh, some of the um, the project would replace damaged sidewalks, widen sidewalks where appropriate, upgrade lighting re and review signal and lane configurations in the uptown as as needed. Um, I don't I don't uh, and this is a question to administration. I don't believe that the that that's really been drilled down the project, but just kind of the project area and what we're attempting to to rectify. That, that's correct. Okay. Um, it would not be dissimilar to the West Union Street improvement between Congress and Court Street where we put the curb bump outs and we, we uh, as you mentioned, we changed the lighting out to the more decorative lighting along there uh, and likely some other potential fixtures. Uh, but uh, yeah. this will make for, I think, a nice improvement in a good portion of the uptown area. And this is the second attempt. Is that correct? Is that is that correct in saying? But but also Nelsonville just just had re secured funding through this for their square. So okay. that's true. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Uh, and we did take the feedback that we received from uh, from ODOT in particular with the transportation and alternatives program grant and uh, Jessica Dine, our city engineer, worked that into this renewal or this reapplication. So. We're hopeful. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, Councilmember Grace. I just had a question. I know several of us at, attended lunch with mm -hmm. the Ohio University Student Senate, um, and a, an issue that was mentioned um, there as for accessibility was mm -hmm. um, an interest in audible signals at the crosswalks. And I was wondering if there was any possibility at, at this um, late date, or if that's something that could possibly be included in. Um, in a project like this or in this this type of request for funding? Uh, it absolutely can be included. As a matter of fact, um, not that that, that was a plant question. <laughs> um, we are currently, we are currently um, meeting with individuals that would certainly benefit from an audible mm -hmm. um, signalization, audible signalization of court and union. Um, okay. And that will be going on. That will actually happen, I think, before this transportation alternatives grant. Um, but it's something that we could possibly pull in. Okay. Yeah. We have. I, I think that that would be worth mm -hmm. adding to um, all, all the crossings of town if, if possible. Yeah. Great. Thank you for the comments. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Ordinance 3219 is an ordinance authorizing 2019 street paving and repairs introduced by Council Member Katsas. President Nicely, thank you. Um, this is uh, one of those seasonal annual things that we start to uh, to listen and learn about. Um, so the total amount this year that we're looking to um, put towards this uh, this endeavor of, of fixing and repaving streets that are in need of it um, is $750,000. $250,000 will be coming from the uh, from Ohio University. Um, and so with that partnership that, uh, that allows us to bring the uh, well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's additional buying power, so it gives us uh, more power with a larger number to, uh, to get more, uh, more linear feet uh, paved. And um, I don't believe at this point, I don't think we've seen the, uh, the street list come through yet. Um, uh, do we, no, yeah, we no. Haven't, okay. and we may have it by the time of the street tour, which council member will, members will take on April 24th. We're still fine too. Still, that okay, that's great. Okay. All right, any other comments or questions? All right. Ordinance 3319 is an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to enter into contracts for interior enhancements to the municipal parking facility, project number 326. Introduced by Councilmember Katsas. President Nicely, uh, as you can see, I've been busy. Um, <laughs> this one, this is a uh, this is a project that is uh, that is being uh, uh, put forth to uh, to improve the um, 
the, uh, the asset that we currently have that's directly across the street from us, the parking garage. And so this, uh, this is a, a little bit over, well, the um, total amount is $630,000 for this project, which would include um, many different elements, paint, lighting, and signage. That signage uh, would, would uh, include wayfinding, so we would have, uh, have a a better a better view of uh, the not only finding the uh, the parking garage but also how many spaces are included in you know that are open inside the uh, in the garage which would encourage more people to go in uh, but once you get inside too um, uh, streamlining the navigational signage and making it easier to understand where you left your car um, so you can find it later um, additional elements is they are planned to open up the stairwell <clears throat> Excuse me to to uh, to change the the look and the feel of the, of that area, uh, improve uh, kind of safety and and just just overall feeling of of navigating that area, um, and then uh, another one that I um, that I uh, grabbed was to move the, and add uh, additional change machines so that the uh, people don't uh, block the main entrance as they're attempting to get quarters uh, straight from the seat of their car. Um, so um, yeah, that's. That's it in a nutshell. Comments or questions from other council members? Yes, Council Member Grace. I just wanted to say I think this is a, a fantastic project, and I've noticed people driving very slowly, looking at the parking garage, looking at the signs, trying to figure out, mm -hmm. can I go in there and park, and I want to wave and say, yes, yes, mm -hmm. they're, they're parking spots. So um, signage will be much more effective than me randomly doing it as I happen to be there. So um, I, I've just heard so many comments from people saying, I, don't, I can't find a place to park. But there, there's yeah, almost uh, always parking in the garage. And um, whatever we can do to help people know that it's there and feel more comfortable using the space, I, I think this will be a beneficial project. And I think the suggestion was made at committee by someone, the possibility of maybe considering murals in the stairwells. If we can, I don't know. I would love it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right. Um, Any other comments? Yes, Council Member McGee. I, I would hope that in connection with the uh, signage for the parking garage, that there might be a sign on Court Street indicating where the garage would be. I noticed some cities have that. Uh, just in a surprise survey, whenever I ask all you students uh, if they know where the parking garage is, since it is across from Municipal Court, um, I would say 90% do not, so um, we definitely need to improve the game as far as letting people know where, where the garage is. Thank you. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ms. Roman, mm -hmm. you can give us your name and address and let us know if you're representing a group. Thank Judith you. Judith Roman, 12 Northwood Drive, Athens, Ohio. I don't re represent anybody. Um, with regards to that parking garage, a lot of people complain how much it smells in there. So that is something that really has to be, you know, taken care of. And also, I know I was told that it's monitored by the police, but it's not. They only do it when they have time and when the cameras are working. That's what they told me at the police department. So I think that's something that maybe should be looked into. Great. I appreciate the comments. We can follow up with that. Yes, Mayor Patterson. Um, I, I can't add to that. that uh, we are um, we are looking into an overhaul of the security cameras that are in there for all floors, and so that is being that uh, will also be looked at as we go through this renovation or our uh, facelift to the parking garage. Councilmember Butler. Thank you, President Meisling. And one of the things that, that um, intrigued me about the project and listened to um, our uh, illustrious Mr. Stone uh, was that there was a discussion of knocking out walls in the stairwell that were not needed for structural purposes. Mm -hmm. So that would hope, hopefully open up the stairwell and potentially deter some of the behavior that might lead to some of the odiferous or mm -hmm. <laughs> poor smelling conditions. 
Okay. Um, so that intrigued me as well about the project, as well as uh, increase in lighting, um, LEDs. It's hard to imagine that it's been 10 years since the perfection group made their recommendations on saving money throughout the city with upgrading lighting purposes, but that intrigued me as well, too, to save money with new and enhanced lighting uh, in, the, in the garage. Mayor Patterson. Just real quick, and it's interesting that you bring up the perfection group, because if you remember, that was transitioning the lighting to T8 fluorescent tubes, too, down there, as opposed to the technologies that we have today. So, again, but that was the latest and greatest 10 years ago, is go with T8s. It's like, okay. Yeah. It'll be a big change in the lumens uh, with this particular enhancement project, interior lighting. Okay, thanks for the comments. 3419 is an ordinance closing a portion of Court Street on Friday, June 7th, August 9th, and September 20, 2019 for a cruise in. Introduced by Council Member Katsas. President Nisley, thank you. Um, in the season of street closures, uh, this is the... Um, the Lions Club uh, that runs a, uh, a cruise in, and this is this only impacts um, one block. Uh, it's Court Street from Washington to State, um, so there are no um, intersections or anything like that that are closed off. It happens on Friday, June seventh, and also Friday, August 9th. The closure is from five p.m. to nine p.m. Okay, thank you. Comments or questions? From council, admin, audience. Okay. Ordinance 3519 is an ordinance closing a portion of Union Street between Court and Congress on Saturday, August 17th from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. for an uptown art event in introduced by Council Member Katsas. President Nisley, thank you. And, uh, and I would like to thank uh, the uh, representatives of AMAC that attended last, uh, last committee meeting last Monday night um, to talk about the second annual um, arts festival that, hap that is going to happen on Saturday. August 17th uh, from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So the street closure is happening during that, that time, uh, Saturday, August 17th, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And this street is it's just Union Street between Court and Congress. Oh, I'm sorry. And the closure is actually from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. So the ordinance says 5 a.m. So this is just a typo in the uh, on that one to uh, five. Or I think that's the that's the event time, and then oh, got it. I'm got sorry, it. Second right, and they're section. actually closing it, yeah, but the correct. title says yes. 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Not to worry. <laughs> okay. Uh, ordinance 3619 is an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code Section 13.04.10, unnecessary noise on Union Street and contiguous property to Union Street on August 17th, 2019 for an uptown art event. Introduced by Council Member Katsas. President Nisley, thank you. This is just one of those parallel ordinances that would go um, along with the uh, street closure uh, for the... Uh, Second Annual AMAC Arts Festival on August 17th. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Ordinance 3719 is an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code 11.04, vending, peddling, and soliciting to allow vending in a designated area on Saturday, August 17th, 2019 during an uptown art event. Introduced by Council Member Katsas. President Nisley, thank you. And this is, once again, um, this is to allow vending to happen during the, uh, the arts festival that is being proposed on Saturday, August 17th, 2019. Okay, thank you. And we do have a minor modification to our next events before we move on to announcements and other business. What we need to do is amend the agenda, which I neglected to do at the beginning of the meeting. So if I could have a motion to amend the agenda to include items, ordinances 38, 19, and 39, 19, which so are ready moved. for introduction tonight and first reading. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of amending the agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay. The agenda has been amended, so now we have Ordinance 3819, and it won't be on your screens for you, but this is an ordinance declaring property located at 7055 Blackburn Road, 
no longer needed for a municipal purpose, and authorizing the mayor to sell said property to another political subdivision. And this is introduced by Councilmember Reisner. Thank you, Madam President. Um, allow me to uh, read the pertinent sections of the ordinance for the first time. Whereas said property was purchased initially to create affordable housing opportunities and whereas the city has historically allowed the Athens Metropolitan Housing Authority to manage the property for that purpose and whereas the city has determined the property would better meet the original intent if transferred to a different political subdivision, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Athens, Ohio, Section 1, Athens City Council hereby declares property located at 7055 Blackburn Road, parcel number A02919000330 no longer needed for a municipal purpose. Section 2, the mayor is hereby authorized to sell said property at 7055 Blackburn Road to Athens Metropolitan Housing Authority, another political subdivision for the sum of $124,000. Section three, the following deed restrictions shall be included as part of the sale. One, for a period of 30 years, the use of said property shall be restricted to provide low moderate income housing. Two, should Athens Metropolitan Housing Authority wish to sell the property, the city of Athens shall have the right of first refusal. Section four, the city auditor is hereby directed to receive the proceeds from the sale of the property into the CDBG fund, 248, the fund used to purchase said property. Okay, any comments or questions? This, we had a discussion last week at, at committee meeting. Yes, council member Grace. I, I just wanted to restate what I said at committee meeting that um, uh, having um, been working with the Athens Affordable Housing Commission, I, I really would, would love to see the proceeds from this um, be used to, to further affordable housing projects in the city of Athens. And um, to the extent that's possible under the allowances of how it was purchased and, and how the, the funds were acquired in the first place. Yeah. And Mayor Patterson. Um, Member Grace, I'm glad you brought that up because um, one of the things that um, I've been working with the law director on and I've also been in communication with the city auditor is the, the idea, I'll leave it as an idea because that's all it is at this point in time, of um, setting up a program to help with, um, with the down payment uh, for people looking to get in, you know, purchase their own homes somewhere in the city. Again, we would have to have some level of metric in terms of of somebody's income, but I think that that would be very appropriate where the city could help with people um, who are struggling to try to come up with a, the, their down payment to move into a house, uh, especially if they're already living in um, low to moderate income housing in the city of Athens. Um, so we are exploring that. Again, the jury's out on that uh, in terms of whether we can do it or not, but I think that would be a very appropriate use of that funding um, or at least setting up a program that could help individuals yeah. um, make that next step into owning their own homes. Okay. Just a brief follow-up, if I may. Um, I, I think that's a, a fantastic idea, something that's been modeled in, in other cities and um, could definitely be really beneficial. Um, additionally, um, a fund that could help people to make improvements um, to homes for a revitalization effort. Um, would be uh, another valuable use. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the audience? Okay. And then we'll move on to the corollary ordinance uh, for the, these pieces of property on Blackburn Road. This is Ordinance 3919, an ordinance declaring property located at 7065 Blackburn Road no longer needed for a municipal purpose and authorizing permission to donate the property to another political subdivision. Introduced by Councilmember Reisner. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this ordinance reads almost identical to the previous order, 3819. Uh, the difference being instead of a, a sale, it's a donation to the Metropolitan Housing Authority. Um, this gives the, author, gives the mayor the, the authority to, to make such a donation. 
Any comments or questions from council members, administration, or the audience? Okay. President yes. Yes. Council Member Grace. Just think that it's, it's um, important to clarify perhaps why one property is being sold and the other is being donated is that un under uh, regulations for Metropolitan Housing Authority, as I understand it, they are prohibited from purchasing adjacent properties. And so we, they are both currently under the management of the Housing Authority. Um, and so this is a way that, that the city can uh, promote that continuing. Mm -hmm. Good clarification on how it makes it possible. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll move on to announcements and other business. Uh, next week we do have committee meeting, and so people will need to let our clerk of council know if they have a committee that needs to meet. And if we could have that information by Wednesday, that would be a help, unless you know tonight. Okay. Finance and personnel, most likely. Most likely, okay. Okay. Um, and then another announcement that I had mentioned earlier when we were talking about appropriating money for the streets. Uh, we do have the annual, um, it's actually called an infrastructure tour, and that's Thursday, April 25th, excuse me, 25th at 1230 p.m. We meet here at City Hall. Uh, members of the public uh, are Welcome to come on that tour. The only thing we need to know ahead of time is if you're planning to attend. It is going to be about two and a half hours long. So we'll be touring all around the city. Uh, do also, uh, we've been informed that we will need to have a special session on April 22nd, and this is for the purpose of being able to move along the city's um, eligibility to be able to call, call for bids for the uh, trash and recycling uh, contract, renewal contract, and so we do need to move that along in place and time. So we'll have that special session on the 22nd. And we do have uh, reappointments to the Shade Tree Commission, and I'm not sure if council members have those details on that or not. Uh, yes, uh, Council Member Katsas. I believe I can speak to this, um, oh, President Nisley. Okay. I believe this is Emily Wood who has uh, has agreed to uh, re-up for another uh, okay. two years uh, with, uh, with a term starting at the 1st of uh, January of this year and ending December 31st. Uh, oh, let me just pull that back up. Of uh, 20. Okay. Yeah. And so yes, and, and so I want to I want to thank her. Her input has been great on the on the committee. So I'm 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 ecstatic that she's willing to continue. Good, good. And so that's a motion to reappoint yeah. her. Yes, please. I'm With sorry. The and is there no? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and second for the reappointment of Emily Wood to the Shade Tree Commission. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay. She's been reappointed and thanked, yes, for her service. We do have uh, another reappointment for the Community Relations Commission that I would like to move forward on. We are able to, um, we're re requesting the um, reappointment of the members who are currently serving, and so I'll briefly read those names. We do have two vacancies, and we do have persons who have been asked to serve. We're just waiting on their bio material. But rather than delay, I'd like to get these renewed right now. So for the current members, it's um, Aaron Thomas, John Schmeeding, Lacey Rogers, Laura Olbers, Lauren Marsen, Marlene de la Cruz Guzman, and Laura Black. And so if I could have a motion for approving their reappointment. This is for a three-year term. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second for reappointment of these members to the community Relations Board, and they've been doing some great work for being a new commission, or reactivating a commission um, that hadn't been active for a number of years. And they've had a number of community programs and, um, and also out in the schools, um, I understand, as of even last week. So doing a lot of programming. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, then that motion carries. Yes, Mayor Patterson. Um, I just had a couple of announcements, if I may. Okay. Um, one of which is, as council knows, I was in Ithaca, New York, attending the Regional International Town Gown Association meeting. I would like to report to council that one of the things I spoke to on a panel was about um, the pending 
uh, ordinance for uh, the e-scooters, uh, at least that we were trying to get ahead of things, and there was a lot of interest at that particular conference um, about some of the things that we were doing. Um, so I want council to be aware of that. The other thing that I want council to be aware of, and anyone who's watching tonight, that I was granted quite an honor over the weekend um, last Saturday at the National Association of Social Workers. Uh, I was given the um, the Public Elected Official of the Year Award by that agency or that organization for the state of Ohio. Um, I was awarded that for the, the fifth uh, region uh, a couple months ago, and then everyone who is, a, is recognized within the regions then goes up for nomination, and uh, is they award it to one individual from several different categories, and one council to be aware of it. It's quite the honor. It's quite exciting. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Okay. Do, and do we have any other announcements from council members? Okay. All right. We now have an opportunity for citizens to speak on legislative items and city services not covered on the agenda. Is there anyone who's wanting to speak? Okay. It looks like we have three gentlemen and four, four. Ge four, four people. And I am going to stick to the three minute limit. You will not speak beyond that. I really need that plan to be followed just so it's fair for everyone tonight. And so why don't we just start and move our way across. So is this Mr. Uh, Crane and then um, Mr. Parker and then Mr. Stouffer and the gentleman here who will soon learn your name too. <laughs> okay, thank you. And yes, if you could, for the camera, so that people in the audience know your name and address, and if you are representing a group. Uh, Damon Crane, 96 Hudson <laughs> Avenue, here representing the Athens Mobile Vending Association. Um, a troubling situation came to our members' attention last week, um, and I think it's part of a larger problem. So as council moves toward making additional changes to the city vending ordinance, I hope that it's a problem the city will be able to solve. Last Monday, burrito buggy owner Jim Strickland started the day by finding a non-vendor vehicle parked in his reserved vending spot. So Jim called parking enforcement to have the vehicle removed, only to be told parking enforcement would no longer enforce the city vending ordinance. That is, they would not enforce the spot reservation Jim had paid to make with the city. So Jim emailed uh, all of the AMVA members, along with council member Crow, who heads up the uh, ad hoc committee on vending for city council and Crow said hey this is news to me too um, so he then tried to find out from the city administration what was going on city service safety director Andy Stone then replied to Crow via email stating quote basically someone who was ticketed had that ticket thrown out of court because the city vendor only parking signs are not compliant with the Ohio manual of uniform traffic control devices Stone then stated, quote, student legal services has advised people who get tickets to pursue it that way. We are correcting the signs, but it is taking some time. Now, I was concerned by Stone's claim that this originated with the Center for Student Legal Services because, of course, the staff attorney um, for the center is Council Member Patrick McGee, who sits on Council's Transportation Committee along with Crow and who initiated Council's ongoing review of the City Vending Ordinance back in November 2017. So if McGee had discovered that Stone's department had uh, not complied with some technical requirement for Ohio street signs, why hadn't McGee informed Council that its vending ordinance was currently unenforceable? But then Crow shared a follow-up email from Council Member McGee, who stated that the Center had nothing to do with any of this. So. Tonight, I'm hoping to find some answers to a few questions. Who exactly told parking enforcement to stop enforcing the vending ordinance? When exactly did this first happen? Why did Stone report that the Center for Student Legal Services was behind all of this when Council Member McGee maintains that's not true? Why did the city administration not notify vendors that the city would not be enforcing the reservations vendors had paid the city to make? Um, until new signs could be made available. And finally, can the city establish, in general, some better communication with vendors? Because this has been an ongoing problem for the members of the association. Back before the association formed, every time there was an upcoming special event that would affect the normal flow of traffic on Union Street, 
former burrito buggy owner Marla Rudder. Mr. Crane, if you'll yep. finish up, that'll help us. Okay. Thanks. Well, my, my point is just that we've always had a hard time finding out what's going on with the city. When there's a special event that affects the flow of traffic on Union Street, we play phone tag and usually aren't able to get a straight answer of will we be able to access our spots and if so, under which special conditions. Okay, so what we'll do is mm -hmm. I'm sure the administration will be communicating with council members and we'll find an answer for you. Thank and you We appreciate much. you taking mm -hmm. the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yes, and Mr. Parker Smith. Hello all, uh, my name is Parker Smith. Uh, I live at 85 West State Street, um, apartment B, uh, and I um, represent uh, the Ohio University Student Senate as the off-campus affairs uh, commissioner. Um, and I just wanted to express my gratitude, um, Councilwoman Grace alluded to earlier, um, to uh, the meeting we had last week. Um, each semester, student senate representatives have a meeting with city council. Um, and while you are our elected officials, there's nothing that says you have to do so. Um, and I just wanted to you know, come and openly state to you that we deeply appreciate this. Um, my time on Student Senate at Ohio University will be coming to an end soon. Um, but I do hope that uh, this will continue well into the future. Um, I know it has been beneficial to me both personally and uh, in the work that we have done in Student Senate. Um, as you know, the city council and administration represents the welfare of the citizens uh, and the city. Sometimes I think we have more shared interests than the students might have uh, in dealing with <coughs> the university administration. Um, and it's always a pleasure um, and an honor to meet and speak with you all. Um, so thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thanks for being here so much of the time too. Yes, Mr. Stouffer. Jack Stauffer, 69 Elmwood. First of all, I'd like to apologize. Uh, when I was here two weeks ago, when I was rushed at the end and got off script, I uh, said that I was PO'd and I did not abbreviate uh, use, or use the PO. Uh, I do not ap um, apologize for being PO'd. I apologize for using the words in chambers. Thank you to the council members who were kind enough to speak to me. I was here two weeks ago to ask council for help getting the service department headed by Mr. Robert Hetty to provide me with a service of checking their check valve in the sewer lateral to my house at 69 Elmwood. As I spoke to last meeting on March 18th, I had submitted a written request on January 18th and two months later on Thursday, March 14th, and both of those went unanswered. I followed that up with a polite phone call, which was not returned, and then I came to council chambers. In any event, the city crew of Nick Joseph and young Glenn Goins came out to the house last Friday, pulled the flapper out of the check valve, we hosed it off and inspected it. It showed signs of deterioration, uh, what looked like, and I assume were rat gnawings on the flapper, and that it was more brittle or stiff than the new one, and these flapper valves need to be very flexible. Nick and Glenn replaced the flapper with one I provided at my expense and everything is in good repair and I feel confident at this time that all should be good for now. Upon reading the instructions that came with the new valve, it is per the uh, manufacturer's recommendation, I gave you guys a copy for, for the record to make it official, that this should be cleaned and inspected every three months. So please take notice to that fact. I spoke with Mr. Hattie this morning and, and later left a voicemail at 1048 to follow up. I got no return phone call. He wanted to take a look at the old flapper. I have the old flapper here with me. It's been properly sanitized if anybody wants to uh, <laughs> take a look at it to see that I'm telling the truth. Right here it is. Um, and you have about 
40 seconds left, Mr. Stauffer. The bigger picture is, as noted in Mr. Stone's letter to me dated 625-15, the sanitary sewer inflow and infiltration problem has caused the city sewer to become overwhelmed, causing my problem. I thought it made it clear at the last meeting that I wanted an update from the city on the steps that had been taken about this issue since Stone's letter of 615. I was, not, I was not permitted to address the City Safety Services Committee at last Monday. Let this be my formal request to get this issue on the next committee agenda so the city residents can find what has been done and to further address the issue so we don't put undue stress on our new equipment down, Mr. Stauffer, down at the thank sewer you, plant. Thank you very much. And we've I know you folks request. are concerned about the environment Mr. and Stauffer. the efficiency of the resources. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the uh, manufacturer's instructions. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Chris Monday. As some of you may know, I'm collecting signatures to get on the ballot for a city council at large seat. Um, I just want to state that a part of the reason why I am compelled to do so is that I think that uh, every level of government from the bottom to the top needs to be saturated with people right now who are willing to show support for all of our brothers and sisters of every gender, every race, nationality, religion because of the executive administration's often hateful uh, take on the way things are. and. I know that there are many candidates for these seats and uh, that you know there is a chance that I may not get it. I also understand the importance of the community. I love this community. So I wanted to pitch something just in case I don't end up winning. Um, with the energy around the armory right now with the uh, art on the side which is awesome. I just wanted to pitch an idea that's been going around in my head uh, for something in Athens. Uh, my first thought was West Elementary when that's gone. But then it occurred to me the armory might be a great place for this. It'll kill uh, three birds with one stone. Um, so revenue, something for young kids, and something for small businesses to be able to get started. Are you familiar with the North Market in Columbus? Uh, something like that, where there would be like little slots for different businesses to start. Could be uh, monthly rent which could be low rent for businesses who otherwise would have a hard time getting started. Um, I've had many business ideas in this town, and to rent a space uptown, as you probably know, is extremely expensive. Uh, this could be you know, small restaurants that may not get a chance, a bookstore, uh, you know, things that are disappearing might have an opportunity to have a little place in there. A uh, large playground, or not necessarily large, but a playground in the middle, there's not much to do uh, with your kids in this town, um, and it, I think it would just be a great community attraction. And uh, I don't know. I, I wish I would have written up an outline uh, for this. And if anybody does have any questions or thoughts about this, I would definitely be willing to and interested to talk about it further. Um, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else in the audience wishing to speak? If not, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay. We've adjourned at 8.04 p.m. Thank you. Good night.